afternoon. My name is Kathleen Casey, and I serve as the chair of the Financial Accounting Foundation. I'd like to start by welcoming our stakeholders turning in to this virtual meeting. Today's meeting will include reports from the FASB chair, the GASB chair, the FAF executive director, and the FAF treasurer. We will also receive reports about the latest activities of the Financial Accounting Standards Advisory Council, the Private Company Council, and the Governmental Accounting Standards Advisory Council. We'll also have a report from our Trustee Standard Setting Process Oversight Committee. Before we get to those reports, I'd like to announce the reappointments of Robert W. Scott and Alan Skelton as chair and vice chair, respectively, of the Governmental Accounting Standards Advisory Council. Mr. Scott is currently director of finance for the city of Brookfield in Wisconsin. And Mr. Skelton serves as the state accounting officer for Georgia. Mr. Scott and Mr. Skelton have provided outstanding leadership to the GAS Act, and we are very pleased they will continue in these important positions for an additional year. At our last meeting, we welcomed the new chairs of the FASB and GASB, Richard Jones and Joel Black, who both officially took office on July 1st. Our boards and staff, led by these new chairs, continue to work diligently supporting our stakeholders during the COVID-19 pandemic. As our country continues to face the unprecedented economic effects of this pandemic, we all share a common purpose in preserving confidence in accounting standard setting and the quality of financial reporting that support the transparency and information flow so essential to our capital markets and economy. With that, let's move into our regular agenda. The first item of business is to approve the minutes from the board's May 13 and June 16, 2020 meetings. May I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And the motions carry. Thank you very much. Our next item is a report from the Oversight Committee, where we'll hear from Eloise Foster and Chuck Allen. Eloise? I think I'm going to start, Kathy, if that's okay. This is Chuck Allen. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Thank you, yeah. Chuck. Yeah, so welcome, everyone. Um, our standard process uh, oversight committee met yesterday morning, and one of the first topics we discussed was the virtual meeting held in late June of the uh, PCC. So, Diane Rubin, since you attended that uh, session, would you like to uh, make a few comments? Sure. Thank you, Chuck. Um, the PCC meeting was held on June 25th, and at that meeting, the PCC discussed um, the recent, uh, recently uh, proposed ASU regarding equity classified stock option awards. They spent a lot of time talking about the effects of COVID-19 on private companies and private company accounting and a number of different issues. Um, it was noted uh, during uh, the meeting that at um, the recent private company and nonprofit accounting update, there were 1,800 participants on the webinar, which was a record. And um, everyone was very, very pleased that uh, so many participants could partake of that webinar. Those are held in June and December of every year. Um, they talked about the town halls. There was one in July, uh, just recently, the AICPA Engage or NATS conference. And um, uh, we were very pleased that the new chair, Rich Jones, was able to um, speak there and talk about the importance of the PCC and the support by FASB of the PCC and uh, some of its accomplishments and, and history. So the next meeting of the PCC will be September 21st. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. So Sue Cosper uh, during the meeting uh, provided her perspectives on that same PCC meeting, as well as progress being made by both the PCC and the FASB on projects related to private company stakeholders. Our committee also had its annual meeting with the PCC chair, Candy Wright. And Candy mentioned some of the technical issues that the PCC has been discussing and provided her thoughts on FASB's considerations of the private company reporting issues and the interaction between the PCC and FASB and other stakeholders. Uh, Candy is going to be uh, presenting a report to uh, all of us here shortly, so I'll let her share 
those thoughts with you directly when she has the uh, microphone to do that. In regards to uh, FASB and GASB, it was the first oversight committee meeting for both Rich Jones and Joel Black as chair of their respective organizations. Uh, they both reported on the impact that the pandemic has had on their agendas, as well as numerous introductory meetings they have participated in as part of their uh, transition. They'll be giving uh, their reports in a few minutes, so I don't want to pre-exempt those. Uh, however, uh, we will mention a few items they discussed at yesterday's uh, committee meeting. Uh, in light of the trustee's decision in May that the PI, PIR process be embedded in the board standing setting processes, Rich did highlight the dedicated PIR webpage recently added to the FASB website and outlined the PRI, PIR activities that are underway for major standards issued in the past few years. Those included revenue recognition, uh, leases, and uh, CECL. Rich also reviewed with us his meetings with various stakeholders and representatives in Washington, D.C. as he was completing his transition as incoming chair, and as well his meetings with various advisory groups of the FASB. So uh, let me conclude my comments and turn it over to Eloise in regards to GASB. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, at yesterday's meeting, Joel Black reported on the educational videos and the webinars that were being prepared for the financial reporting model exposure draft and the revenue and expense recognition preliminary views document, both of which were issued in June. Joel also provided the committee with an update on the GASB's PIR activities. He pointed out that the GASB is conducting PIRs on six standards. The reviews of the two pension-related standards are in the second stage of the process, while the other four are in the stage one. In addition to meeting with the PCC chair yesterday, the committee had its annual meeting with GASEC chair Robert Scott. Robert reported that the GASEC's March and June meetings were very productive, despite the fact that they were both held virtually. He indicated that the Advisory Council is very excited about having the opportunity to provide input into the FAST strategic planning process and that they appreciate the opportunity of being asked to do so. In closing, uh, Robert just said he believes that the Advisory Council is very effective. Uh, he says that he feels that their input is valued and that their contributions are recognized by the GASB staff and the GASB leadership. Now, at each of our committee meetings, we also discuss the various advisory council and other meetings that com committee members have attended in the past few months. Diane Rubin just talked about the June PCC meeting, and she basically shared that same information with us yesterday. Chuck Allen and Mary Boff provided some comments on the June 23rd virtual FASAC meeting that they observed. Uh, Chuck, would you like to kick this off and uh, share a few remarks about your observations of that meeting? I sure will, Eloise. Um, yes, um, Michael Morrow chaired the meeting, and the meeting included topics of the uh, post-implementation review process, highlights of current topics with the FASB, SEC, and the PCAOB, and breakout sessions focused on accounting standards and financial statements in the current environment that we're working in. I found the virtual meetings to be well run and the members very engaged. And uh, Mary Barth, you were at the meeting also, and I know you have some thoughts in regards to what you observed as well. So Mary, could you follow up? And because I know you had a different perspective and share some other information with us. Thank you, Eloise. And Chuck, one of the things that I noted in the meeting was the use of the breakout room feature in Zoom. I had observed the meeting in March, the first virtual meeting which went well, but I thought this, using the breakout room feature really took this meeting to a new height. They were, the breakout rooms were used to discuss in pre-assigned diverse small groups, several topics under the heading of accounting standards and financial statements in the current environment. The group I was assigned to was group C, and we were to talk about CISO loan and lease modifications and troubled debt restructurings. And the, the group were assigned specific questions such as what accounting and disclosure requirements are working well in the current environment, what could be improved, and from a standard setting process, do current standard setting processes and implementation processes provide adequate tools for the FASB to react quickly to needed additions or changes to GAAP. 
Almost all of the FASAC members in my group offered multiple comments and perspectives on these questions. And I thought the group, breakout group feature worked really well to encourage broad participation. After the breakouts, the full FASAC reconvened and a FASAC member from each group who had been pre-assigned as a leader of that group summarized the small group discussions. The points made by the FASAC member leaders were clearly conveyed to the full group, which indicated to me that everyone understood the points were being made and those, pay, those points were conveyed to the FASB and the FASAC as a whole. The meeting, of course, had an administrative session in full, full, um, full session to talk about what's working and not working at FASAC meetings. But all in all, I thought there was a fulsome and candid discussion of the topics from varied, varied perspectives. And thus, to me, the FASAC seemed to be fulfilling its role and doing quite well in this virtual environment. Thank you, Chuck, and thank you, Mary. Uh, lastly, David Lillard provided his observations of the June 15th virtual GASEC meeting and the July 28th and 29th virtual GASB meetings. David, would you like to report your observations, please? Yes, thank you, uh, Eloise. Uh, the GASAC meeting on June 15, 2020 was held virtually, as you indicated. I just want to point out that it had extremely good participation in the meeting only had three members absent and 28 members present for the meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chairman Scott and the leadership of the Gas Act did a great job of presiding over the meeting and they went over a number of key topics and such. And also the, the GASB board members participated in the meeting along with the GASB staff and supplied invaluable background materials and also participation during the meeting. It was one where a number of topics were thoroughly considered and valuable input was gathered for the GASB and its uh, considerations. The GASB meetings on um, July 28 and 29 were also very valuable meetings. Uh, on the 28th of July, they held a public hearing virtually uh, involving conceptual framework and disclosure framework issues where a number of key stakeholder organizations and others that expressed comments and interest in the proposal uh, were able to express their comments more fully. And again, the GASB staff participated in this along with GASB board members and the chairman, of course, uh, Chairman Black did a great job of presiding over the meeting and did so very effectively. The next day that continued with a GASB meeting video conference on the 29th of July, which was equally productive on a number of topics. Thank you, Eloise. Thank you, David. Madam Chair, that concludes the report of the Standard Setting Process Oversight Committee. Well, thank you to you both. Um, our next item is uh, to hear reports from the chairs of the FASB, FASAC, PCC, GASB, and GASAC. And we'll start with the FASB. Rich? Thanks, Kathy. Uh, it's my pleasure to report the activities of the FASB for the second quarter of 2020. We've been operating remotely for the quarter. Uh, that is a transition I can report has gone well, and we've been able to quickly move to remote connectivity with our staff and our stakeholders. I'd like to begin by providing an overview of the post-implementation review status. Uh, the PIR process is now firmly embedded within the board standard setting process, while subject to oversight by the FAF Board of Trustees. The staff has provided the board and the public a plan for the PIR process for those standards currently under review. Those standards are revenue recognition, leasing, and CECL, the current expected credit loss model. The plans are subject to change as we learn more while conducting the review. For example, the PIR can be expanded and additional steps and outreach can be added. As Chuck mentioned earlier, we launched a dedicated webpage on the FASB website for all things related to the PIR, a description of the PIR process and stages, the plans that have been presented, and any other communication related to the individual PIRs. That page is located at fasb.org backslash PIR. I'd like next to turn to transition and stakeholder outreach. I'm happy from a personal level to report that we were very active on chair transition activities in the second quarter, as well as outreach with our stakeholders. And I would like to thank former chairman Russ Golden for all his efforts in that regard. I would like to also add that our new technical director, Hillary Salo, joined us this week. Um, beyond transition, our outreach included numerous meetings with investors, preparers, elected officials, international standard setters, academics, regulators, and practitioners. 
We also conducted numerous meetings with our advisory committees and the PCC. You will hear reports from the chairs of FASAC and PCC later in this meeting. Our outreach has been focused on understanding what is working well and what challenges either our standards or our stakeholders are facing in the current environment. I'd like to report that our standards are holding up well, but we continue to work with our stakeholders to understand what improvements can be made to reduce costs or increase benefits from our existing or proposed standards. One item of note is some of our stakeholders are facing the first economic downturn of their careers, and the standards that come into play in these situations are not the most familiar to them. We've been working with outside organizations, including the AICPA, to increase awareness of those standards and how they are applied in the current environment. I'll now move to standard setting activities. In response to COVID-19 and the challenges our stakeholders are facing, we have reprioritized our agenda. We shifted projects that are less time sensitive to the second half of 2020. We, we held only three board meetings in the second quarter, all virtually one, on, time, on time sensitive topics such as effective dates. Our leases roundtable was postponed until September 18th and will be held virtually as expected to be the case for most of our outreach throughout the remainder of this year. We've delayed issuing other planned public exposure documents to help ensure that stakeholders will have the opportunity to provide feedback. Uh, we've resumed regular board meetings virtually for now on July 15th, while continuing to be mindful about the preoccupation of stakeholders with COVID-19 and the related economic conditions. And we'll continue to factor in the environment we and our stakeholders are operating in as we move forward, being particularly cognizant that many of our stakeholders are at capacity managing other issues. We will continue to prioritize activities related to emerging issues and standards that are not yet effective, and carefully consider comment periods and effective dates for any new standards. Noteworthy is that we have over 20 active projects on our agenda. Those projects were often added and their direction was often set by different board members than are serving today. As a result, we will need to spend some time reconfirming both the board's interest in pursuing those projects as well as their direction. As it relates to standard setting, we finalized an ASU that provides one-year delays for private company and certain not-for-profit stakeholders on standards that were imminent, with, that had imminent effective dates that included revenue recognition and leasing. We also proposed a one-year delay for the new insurance standard. Um, while the board decided not to delay other standards at this time, that is an issue that our staff and our board is monitoring closely to see if we need to take additional action in the future. In August, the board did release a finalized standard related to liabilities and equity that consisted largely of simplification of convertible debt accounting. In addition, the board is also in the process of finalizing a standard related to the presentation and disclosure by not-for-profits for, for non-monetary contributions that is intended to both highlight those contributions as well, well as how they are valued. And then finally, as a direct result of our PR act, PIR activities, the board added a project to our agenda and subsequently decided to move forward with an exposure draft on creating practical expedients for private company franchisors revenue recognition account. This project was added in response to growing concerns about the implementation of the revenue standard by these private companies. In addition, in July, the board added a targeted improvements project related to leasing to address technical matters that had arisen as part of the adoption. That included sales type leases with substantial variable payments, remeasurement of lease payments, and reduction in scope of lease contracts. Kathy, that completes my report. Thank you very much, Rich. Are there any questions for Rich? Chuck? Yeah, Rich, um, look, certainly one of the advantages of this COVID-19 situation is that we don't have to travel internationally anymore, at least for, for a short period of time. And I uh, was wondering uh, if you have any upcoming virtual meetings or discussions with the ISB and any current plans to work collaboratively with them on uh, goodwill or any other issues? Yes. So, Chuck, we do. In fact, we have a tentatively scheduled joint board meeting for November of this year. Um, in addition, we have regular contact with the chair of the, of the ISB as well as the technical director there to make sure that we are aligned and communicating well on projects that we are working on. Diane. Uh, yes, Rich, uh, you mentioned CECIL in your remarks. And while a number of larger institutions have adopted CECIL, can you comment on FASB's work right now with 
um, the costs and complexities of implementation for smaller institutions? Sure, Kathy. And when when uh, the board passed uh, Cecil, they selected two adoption dates, one for public companies and a second for smaller public and private entities. And part of the reason was that we thought we would learn from the adoption of the larger entities and be able to make changes if needed prior to the adoption by that second wave of adopters. We are in the process of extensive outreach with users of financial information, preparers, as well as those private companies monitoring their implementation efforts to understand what costs and benefits are associated with the standard. Are they consistent with our original assumptions? And if there's any changes that we need to make. So I would encourage all of our stakeholders, particularly in that category, to continue to reach out to us as, as we're exploring solutions. Are there other questions for Rich? If not, thank you again, Rich, for your report. And we'll now turn to the chair of the FASAC, Mike Morrow. Mike? Thanks, Kathleen. Uh, my report can be found on master page 116. Um, that report includes activities through the end of June. And today I'll highlight some recent and upcoming activities, starting with the June FASAC meeting. And as Chuck and Mary noted, that was held in a virtual fashion. And, and kudos to the staff for the work they did behind the scenes to uh, facilitate the breakout rooms and some of the different things we tried to do to. Uh, continue to maintain the quality of the dialogue uh, despite the format. And um, I would uh, agree with the comments that Mary uh, made that I thought um, it worked well given the circumstances and we'll continue to use that format and continue to look to improve it. Um, the first topic we discussed at that meeting was the PIR process. And during that session, FaceAct members uh, supported the uh, FaceAct's PRR process changes, indicated responding to in, um, indicated responding to evolving issues in a timely matter should be a priority. They commended the board's outreach efforts to stakeholders on recent major standards, suggested consideration of smaller projects at a cost effective manner as well. Um, and then as noted, the second thing we did, and this was a bit of a mid course correction versus what was on our uh, previously scheduled agenda is we just carved out a session of time to deal with the uh, accounting standards, financial statement uh, implications given the current pandemic environment. Um, so we added a number of topics, uh, government assistance, risks and uncertainties, going concern, impairment, credit losses, loan and lease modifications, and um, had a good fulsome discussion on each of those topics in terms of how different users were uh, dealing with those issues, preparers were dealing with those issues, and basically all of the stakeholders had a good dialogue about the implications of that in the midst of the pandemic. Our plan is to continue to monitor these ongoing challenges and determine if there are additional topics or follow up on these topics that would warrant further discussion uh, at upcoming meetings, and if so, we'll adjust our agenda accordingly. Uh, but I thought it was a good healthy dialogue and a good, um, a good correction to make given the circumstances. Um, we also held our annual self-review session, a look back of our activities, topics covered, goals, future meeting topics, and a self-assessment. We had previously planned to do that in March and we postponed it until this session. We got some good feedback coming out of that and we'll continue to uh, address and modify uh, our approach as we go forward given that feedback. Um, our upcoming meeting will be on uh, Thursday, September 24th. That will be held in a virtual fashion as well. Uh, we anticipate the topics are going to be a discussion of the accounting for R&D and whether improvements to the accounting should be a priority for the board's future agenda. And we're also going to have our first uh, review of the implementation, implementation of CECL. It's going to focus on the costs and benefits of CECL, including the application of that standard to shorter term receivables. Um, we've had similar past sessions on leases and revenue, and this is part of our participation in the board's PIR process. So I think that should be a good, healthy dialogue as we go forward. Um, looking forward, um, this is also the time of year where we'll be soliciting, soliciting nominations for FASAC vacancies for terms beginning in January 2021. Um, the nomination process is public and open to all that are interested. Uh, further communications are expected this month. They'll include information about the types of candidates from diverse backgrounds that we're seeking, including financial statement preparers from their various industries, and this year, particularly from private companies. Um, also, investors and other financial statement users, and any other qualified candidates that have special attributes or a particular perspective that would add to the work of our committee. And we'd welcome any suggestions that you might have. 
Uh, we've also updated and included in the materials on page 121 a longer term impact, a longer term outlook of our potential FASB Face Act topics for 2021. We welcome your input on these and any other topics that you think Face Act should consider in the future. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks so much, Mike. Are there questions? Well, excellent report, Mike. We appreciate it and look forward to hearing more about uh, your work at our next meeting. With that, we'll move on to the report of the PCC chair, Candy. Thank you. Appreciate uh, being with y'all today. Uh, I come every, every year to give a presentation to you. So this is my annual update for uh, the FAF trustees. Uh, we, as has been mentioned already, we issued the practical expedient to measure grant date fair value of equity classified share based awards yesterday. We are very excited about that. It's got a 45 day comment period that would be October the 1st. And so we are hoping that now is the right time for our stakeholders to be able to devote some time to give us some thoughtful feedback on this exposure draft. We have also started our discussion on a similar but um, uh, related issue on profits interest and the related partnership accounting issues uh, that go with that. Uh, we are forming a working group that will start meeting in September. And we are very excited about this project. It is very uh, highly complex area. There is uh, no or little guidance in some aspects of this uh, topic. So we will need to work closely with the board to uh, develop solutions for our private company stakeholders. Um, we can't have an alternative or practical expedient to, us, to some guidance if there is no guidance. So the board may have to uh, step in and, um, and help uh, create some of that guidance to be able to have solutions in this area. But this is one that we are very excited about. It's going to be a long journey, but I think it's going to be very helpful uh, to the private company stakeholders um, as, as a result of the work. In both the April and the June meetings, we, um, as, as FASAC did, devoted part of our time to current issues and financial reporting that have come up during the pandemic. Uh, we had good discussions with the board from a private company perspective uh, relating to issues that our private company constituents may not be familiar with. It may be the first time that they're having to deal with debt modifications or impairments, maybe in their careers. And so it was a good discussion. We are also working uh, with the FASB staff as they develop some educational guidance for uh, to help our private company stakeholders as, as well as public companies uh, in those uh, areas where people may not be as familiar with the guidance. So looking forward to continuing our work with the FASB staff uh, in that area. From a communications and outreach perspective, there are a couple of things that I, I would like to highlight. Uh, in uh, 2019, both of them towards the back half of 2019, we participated at the annual AAA conference um, which raised awareness of the PCC with that uh, constituency. We've not had a lot of um, dialogue with that group, so we're very excited about starting that, uh, that dialogue and raising our awareness so that maybe um, we can get some of the PCC uh, standards in the classroom and taught um, in, in, at the college level. We also held a meeting, a joint meeting, with the Small Business Advisory Committee uh, of the FASB, and that is a group that is made up of uh, small public reporting companies. And we discussed issues that are common to both uh, private companies and small public companies, and I think it was a very beneficial meeting, and we look forward to having that meeting uh, every other year so that we can discuss items of uh, mutual interest. As Diane mentioned, the attendance of the semi-annual uh, private company and not-for-profit webcast was amazing. Uh, I think the PCC got good exposure during that. The webcast was, uh, was well done. I attended and just very excited about the interest in, uh, in that topic uh, for, uh, for June. We also had uh, one town hall meeting in uh, July at the Engage conference of the AICBA. Although it was virtual, we were still able to get some good input from our private company uh, stakeholders there. We had polling questions. We had uh, questions that were submitted online and also the chat room. That's a feature of uh, many of the platforms that uh, host virtual meetings. And so I think we got some good information, uh, even though it was uh, a virtual um, participation. And I, and I also would add that 
um, when they went virtual with that conference, many, many, many of the original sessions had to be cut just due to the virtual nature of that conference, but the PCC Town Hall was not one of the ones that got cut. They felt like it was important and that we provided value to the, uh, the participants, and so we were very pleased to still be asked to participate in that group. Um, we will hold our annual liaison uh, meeting with the Technical Issues Committee of the AICPA. It's a group where we get a lot of input and a lot of advice from. We will hold that meeting in September and we will look forward to that um, discussion with that group. Um, we have made some changes in the way that we prepare for our meetings to better um, help our members be uh, effective at the meetings and give us a better chance at achieving our objectives. So I think those have been uh, very, very well received by the members and I think they've been effective. And we've also made some um, changes in our meeting processes to better align our meetings with the way that the other uh, advisory groups of the FASB work as well. So I think that is um, bringing us into the, the same uh, processes that everyone else uses. So pleased about that as well. We have new members that are really doing well. They're adding, they're engaged, they're uh, giving us a different perspective. So pleased with that. And uh, we also have a new uh, PCC coordinator from the FASB staff. She's doing a great job. She jumped right in and is taking good care of us. So um, really appreciate all of the efforts that uh, Jennifer Weiss is doing for us as well. So um, with that, I'll be happy to take any questions. Thanks very much, Candy. Mary, do you have a question for uh, Candy? Candy, FASB has to endorse uh, PCC proposals that, that you make. And I'm wondering if you could tell us from your perspective how that process works. Do the, do, the, do the PCC and the FASB always agree? And what happens when they don't agree? So we don't always agree, but that's okay. <laughs> that uh, makes for healthy dialogue uh, and different perspectives. And I really appreciate um, the fact that they try to understand, you know, perspectives of the PCC and where we're coming from. And then they um, also are very um, diligent in uh, communicating their perspectives. And most of the time we're able to work out some sort of compromise that uh, both parties can live with. And that's still a good answer and a good result for the private companies. Um, that might take a little bit longer, but I think that's what due process is all about. That's what we, that's what it should be. It should be about getting to the right answer, not getting there the fastest. So um, I think, you know, it, it's, it's a healthy discussion. Other questions for Candy? If not, thank you again, Candy. Excellent report. And glad to see that you're getting, um, you know, so much participation in the meetings. It's fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Um, our next report is from the chair of the GASB, Joel. Thanks, Kathy. I'm excited uh, as the GASB chair to provide the second quarter report on our activities. Uh, it was a very busy quarter for the GASB. Uh, as was planned, it was the last uh, quarter for Chairman Bout's uh, chair, um, tenure on the GASB as well as board member Dr. Granoff. And so there were a couple of projects that were ongoing that uh, they hoped to finalize and issue standards, and they did. Uh, we also got our big three. They wanted to get our big three to significant milestones in their due process uh, before their tenures ended, and, and that also occurred. So it was a very busy quarter uh, as planned, but on top of that, we had the COVID-19 response to deal with, and I'm happy to report that we had a lot of efforts there um, that, that went very well. And so a really big, um, you know, appreciation and kudos to, to that, that board to David Bean and to our tremendous staff for all the efforts they, they went to and undertook uh, during the quarter. Uh, on the COVID-19 response, uh, probably the, the biggest thing we did was issue GASB 95 as a postponement standard that postponed all uh, existing standards that could have not potentially not been implemented yet and move push back the implementation date or effective date 12 to 18 months. Uh, I should note that uh, we, we got that standard out in what we believe is record time, I think from start to finish was six weeks. Uh, in doing so, though the board did approve uh, a waiver to our rules of procedure, which for us calls for an exposure draft to have a 30-day comment period uh, for a proposed standard 
In this case, the board approved a 15-day comment period so that we could get that relief guidance out to uh, our, our stakeholders quickly. I will say that Chair Vout uh, did discuss this prior to taking it to the board for a vote with uh, John Ockenkloss, uh, the BAF Executive Director, as well as uh, Trustee Chair Kathy Casey and the Executive Committee of the Trustees. Um, and, and I will say we also made sure we got a lot of good response, in particular from the user group community to make sure that they were okay with the postponement. And it's all been very well received, all the comments we had uh, got during the process and since. In addition to that COVID-19 related, we issued a technical bulletin on the significant CARES Act funding and how that should be accounted for. And has been very well received from preparers and auditors in particular. We also have a, a good emergency toolbox, similar to what other uh, presentations today have, have discussed. This lists for us and the GASB a lot of maybe accounting areas that aren't normally dealt with, but now in this time of financial hardship and uh, during the pandemic might come up for the first time in many people's careers. So we've got a good list of those and what we call the emergency toolbox on our website, and then references to where in the GASB guidance you can go to get um, some good accounting advice there. In addition to the COVID-19 response, uh, we issued two new standards, GASB 96 on subscription-based IT arrangements in 97, which provided some component units slash fiduciary activity guidance slash relief and talked about 457 deferred comp plan accounting. On the due process document uh, front, our big three, uh, financial reporting model exposure draft was issued or approved on June 30 and issued shortly thereafter. Revenue and expense recognition preliminary views was issued in June. Both of those we have uh, are very extensive documents. We have very long comment periods that we approved, uh, all the eight month comment periods from their issuance all the way to the end of February 2021 for both of them. Uh, in order to give people understanding they're still dealing with uh, strained resources in today's environment, uh, giving them appropriate time to um, respond to these important documents. Our final big three, the disclosure project, um, we extended that exposure draft comment period to June 30th um, and got a lot of good comments, had an all virtual public hearing at the end of July that was uh, had a lot of good dialogue uh, and we're in re-deliberations re and expect to issue that concept statement on time in the spring of 2021. Uh, other projects added, we did add an implementation guide update to our technical agenda in June. In July, we added a risk and uncertainties disclosure project to our technical agenda. And this week, we uh, hope to add an omnibus project to the technical agenda and a non-financial asset related project to our research agenda. All four of those items we believe to be group one activity. Finally, on our post-implementation review process or PIRs, uh, we continue to have significant internal activity. Uh, we have a GASB website for PIRs, like the FASB does, looks like it, uh, that went online actually this morning. Uh, so we continue with those efforts. During the second quarter, the external outreach we did postpone for a little bit uh, any outreach related to PIRs because people were dealing with um, COVID-19 in our state and local governments and and user communities were, were dealing with that. And so we postponed that, but those activities, external outreach for PIRs has begun anew. Uh, so with that, um, I think that's a pretty good summary of our activities, busy quarter. I'll be happy to answer any questions anybody has. Thanks very much, Joel. Mary? Well, Joel, you, as you mentioned, Professor Granoff's term ended on the GASB, and so he's rotated off, and we didn't replace him with another academic. We postponed that placement. And I'm just wondering whether GASB is doing anything extra to keep the academic com community engaged, given that there's no longer an academic member, temporarily no, no longer an academic member on the, on the board itself. Sure. We, we are, that, that community is very important to us. Um, we, we've always kind of worked with them for, to assist in our research efforts. And we have some some, some good projects going on that some of which have been ongoing, some of which have started, some crane grants that we've recently awarded and some other research projects that we've put proposal requests for proposals up that are research academic based. Um, 
those are significant stakeholder groups that I've met with uh, to, to kind of transition from Chair Bout's tenure um, and, and that relationship too with some of the groups that, that are representative of the academic community. So we're very conscious of, of their importance to our process and, and definitely continuing to engage with them uh, and get their perspectives on everything we're doing. Other questions for Joel? If not, thanks again for your report, Joel. Um, you. Our next report is from the chair of the GAS Act, Robert. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my report starts on master page 142 of the trustees agenda materials and again covers the second calendar quarter of 2020. The GAS Act met on uh, June 15th, uh, as noted previously, uh, uh, via video conference, and I wish to echo Mike Morrow's comments uh, and kudos to the staff and their support of, of, uh, of our meeting with, uh, you know, over 30 uh, participants uh, and again, active participants, which we are very glad to, to, uh, to have on the council. And uh, thank uh, Trustees Foster and Lillard for, for joining us and observing the meeting. Uh, as is the case at uh, most GAS Act meetings, if not nearly all, we had a plethora of topics to run through to provide input to the board and the staff. Uh, the first being uh, the financial reporting model, the, the number one of the big so-called big three as Chairman Black just indicated, uh, with the exposure draft being uh, released at the end of June or uh, we had our last shot at uh, providing feedback on certain tentative decisions of the board as well as language about application of the short-term financial resources measurement focus and accrual basis of accounting for governmental fund statements, which is a significant uh, aspect uh, of the uh, proposed standard. We also had the opportunity to provide uh, feedback on the preliminary views for the second of the big three on revenue and expense recognition, including uh, the, an overview of the basic principles in chapter two of that uh, due process document. Following those conversations, the council had the opportunity to discuss with the GASB as well as FAF communication staff outreach efforts and provide feedback on how best to elicit feedback from stakeholder and constituent organizations on the financial reporting model, the recognition conceptual framework project and the preliminary, preliminary views for the revenue and expense recognition project, uh, which I think was a, a, a good conversation among the council in terms of providing some alternative thoughts in terms of getting that getting those communications to stakeholders uh, particularly given the the long comment periods for those due process documents uh, other topics which the council discussed at their june meeting included the project on the compensated absences uh, the potential projects which chairman black just noted uh, one of which was been added the agenda on risk and uncertainties and also a research effort on the term non-financial assets in financial reporting. Uh, we also provided feedback regarding the prior period adjustments, accounting changes and error corrections project to the board and the staff. And we discussed three uh, pre-agenda research projects, interim financial reporting, inter investment fees and going concern disclosures. All three of those pre-agenda research projects arose in part from the gas X annual prioritization process that we participate in to provide feedback to the board and the staff. We also, as was previously noted during the trustee, the oversight committee report, we had the, uh, we were fortunate to provide some in, initial input and have some conversations revolving around the strategic planning effort that the foundation is going to be undertaking with the trustees and FAF management and we will also be having that item on the October agenda. And as noted, we appreciate the opportunity for stakeholders to have input in, in that process uh, through, through the gas sec. Lastly, we also had the opportunity to discuss emerging practice issues, which we have on our each agenda and items which were identified by council members as potentially uh, requiring some attention, including included projection of future contributions to pensions, uh, accounting for taxable bonds that are being issued by governments that traditionally have issued tax exempt debt, liquidity and related disclosures, and private par 
public-private partnerships, which are being set up as limited liability corporations and a, a, a primary government's involvement in backing those corporations' payments. Our next meeting of the GAS Act is scheduled to be held on October 19th and 20th, again, in a virtual fashion, and we would welcome uh, any observation participation from the trustees, as well as our, our stakeholders uh, observing our meetings. And with that, Madam Chair, I would welcome any questions from, from the board. Thank you again for your report, Robert. Are there questions for Robert? If not, thanks again. And we will now move to a report from our FAF Executive Director, John Auchincloss. John? Thank you, Kathy. Um, as Rich Jones and Joel Black have noted, our organization is continuing to work remotely. And it's my observation that we're doing so in a highly effective manner. Um, I want to thank the staff of the FAF for all the work they do to provide the tools and support to the FASB and GASB as they engage in standard setting and engaging with their stakeholders. And I also want to thank, as I think I've done before, our board of trustees for having had the foresight to approve investments in our technology well before this pandemic started um, that have proved both timely and invaluable to this effort. I want to turn briefly to the subject of appointments. Um, the Appointments Committee of our Board of Trustees, uh, supported by the FAF staff and outside search firms, has continued with the important work of appointing successors to the membership of our standard setting boards and advisory groups, as well as to its own membership. Um, as we previously announced, we are currently searching for a FASB member to replace Hal Schroeder, whose final term will end on June 30th of 2021. Five new trustees to replace our current trustees, Diane Rubin, Chuck Allen, Chris Cumming, Eugene Flood, and Ken Robinson, whose terms will end on December 31st of this year. We've conducted interviews relating to these searches um, over the summer and uh, hope to be able to announce appointments later this fall. Also, as we announced in mid-June, Following the recommendation of the Appointments Committee, the FAF trustees appointed Diane Ray to a five-year term as a part-time GASB member to succeed Professor Michael Granoff, whose term ended on June 30th. Ms. Ray is the state auditor in Colorado and officially joined the organization on July 1st. Finally, I think um, our chair has already announced the appointments made earlier today by the board, reappointments um, of the uh, Robert Scott as Gas Act Chair and Alan Skelton as Gas Act Vice Chair. Our content vision and enablement project, which we call our CVE project, by which we are aiming to bring our publication process into the 21st century, is proceeding and is in the second of its three phases. While we did experience some delays in the project over the spring and summer, I'm happy to report that it appears now to be back on the tracks. We're gonna be working with our vendors to support all the foundational work needed to begin implementation of the new system sometime next year. We currently expect the project will be completed in the second half of 2021, although some implementation work may spill over into 2022. I want to conclude my report by noting that late last year, our Board of Trustees began discussions about the importance of re-emphasizing a diversity and inclusion strategy at the FAF. A project plan was put into place earlier this year, and in mid-July, the FASB, GASB, and FAF leadership teams began important conversations on diversity, inclusion, and race with the entire organization and we have required that everyone in our organization complete unconscious bias training. In addition to leadership dialogue, we've had several sessions with both staff and leadership facilitated by an external consultant. These sessions are crucial to our collective ability to advance the organization's diversity and inclusion agenda through meaningful dialogue and shared learning. And uh, Madam Chair, that's my report and I would be happy to take any questions. Thanks very much, John. Does anybody have any questions for John? If not, thank you very much. 
Our final report is from our treasurer, Chris Cumming, uh, who will report on our financials. Chris? Sorry about that. That's that mute button. Uh, so thank you, Kathy. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be uh, talking about the material that begins on page uh, 145, and that's page 145. Uh, if you'd like to follow along, the uh, net assets of the financial accounting rose 24.6 million in the first month of the year. Uh, the substantial rise, but remember, this is because the accounting support fees. Oh, no. Oh. Chris? I think we've lost you. You're on mute. Uh, yes, excellent. The uh, net assets of financial accounting rose 24.6 million in the first six months of the year. The large increase, you'll recall, is always because of all of the accounting stories as it has at the beginning of the year. Nonetheless, we are 3.2 million favorable, that is, better budget uh, in terms of the increase this year. Uh, the reasons for that are primarily on the expense side, where related travel and uh, meeting expenses are down. There are some temporary uh, um, timing changes that are affecting the, the expenses, lower professional fees, and uh, a couple of open positions. The uh, remainder of the increase really came from, in the analysis, came from a much stronger performance in the national rates. So our reserve fund uh, is now budgeted by about 650000 Overall, the, uh, the amount of our assets is $98 million. And so we are in good financial shape. And with that, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Chris. I was glad to hear the last line in particular. That was very clear. <laughs> Um, excellent. Um, if there's no further questions um, for anyone, this reflects the end of our public session of today's uh, FAF Board of Trustees meeting. I'd like to remind everyone that the next meeting will be held on Tuesday, November the 17th. And finally, I want to thank everyone again uh, for tuning into our meeting today and wish you all a good day. Thank you very much.